So this is a beauty dish. The 20 inch, um, Profoto calls it a soft light reflector. It's a beauty dish by all you know, intents and purposes. And if you look, the light bounces into the reflector, back into the dish. But I want you to take a look at a couple cautions for this beauty dish. So I can balance that, all right? All right, a couple cautions for this. And I think the camera should be able to see this. You guys might not be able to. Is depending on how you have the beauty dish angled, you can actually get really bad light. Because what you want for how a beauty dish works is you want the center reflector to be lined up with the subject's face. So let's say that you have a subject bouncing around, moving around, dancing. Well, if they get out of alignment with that center reflector and they move over, they catch the edge of the dish, which is what we have right here. So if the camera can see, I'm actually catching like a raw end of the light, and then the light gets a little duller, and then it's got the glow in the middle. So when the beauty dish is lined up with her face, that is the quality of light you want. That's the ideal. The next thing for a beauty dish is because it is still relatively small, if you want that soft light source, it's got to be close. If I start backing the beauty dish up, it gets more contrasty and rougher and rougher and rougher um, to the skin texture as I back up. So I'm usually working with my beauty dish at about two and a half to four feet, like pretty close. I would honestly say majority of the time I'm like here-ish, some kind of distance like this. So this is what, this is what I would recommend um, for a beauty dish. Same thing, if you want your soft box to be softer, you bring it closer. If you want your beauty dish to be uh, softer, you bring it a little bit closer. There's also kind of the, um, that thing, <laughs> diffuser sock. sock. I always thought that was a strange name. Okay, um, the next thing is let's say you're like, I do want a little bit more shape to the face and a little bit more direction of light and a little bit more contrast to the jawline and the cheekbones, but I look at the skin and I'm like, it's still a little harsh. Maybe you have a subject, and I, I frequently have this with athletes, that have a little bit more oily skin. And you're photographing them under this light, and those highlights are too bright. So to get softer light, you diffuse. So you can add a sock on top, and it just cuts out some of the contrast. So that's a good way to be flexible. It will not be as soft as a softbox but it might cut down on the brightness of the highlights. It basically brings in the contrast just a little bit. To be honest, I don't usually use a sock. If I want soft, I go for an Octobox or a Softbox, or then I do a beauty dish. So I just kind of make more of a decision that way. So I'm going to take a photo of her. Okay, well, I like to, I should grab my meter in the next section, but. Okay, um, for beauty photography, if I'm shooting this for purely for beauty, I can put the light very centered. Very centered means flat light, means no contrast. No, I mean, no direction. It means like nice and centered, there's not gonna be a lot of raking light or a lot of texture. So I've got it centered, which is why I use a boom arm or some kind of arm to get it out centered over my subject. So that's great. The further up I raise the light, if she had wrinkles, that would be bad because it would start carving out her wrinkles. She doesn't, so instead I can raise the light and it starts carving out her cheekbone and jawline. So I'm going to increase some of that texture because I'm raising the light up a little bit, but I've tried to minimize it by flattening it. So I'm like balancing all these things. So I'm going to raise this up just a little bit. Perfect. Great. And uh, can I have the reflector, the white one, in a second? All right, so let me a quick shot here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So the next picture that shows up, what you'll be able to see is the highlights on her forehead are still there, but they're not as bright and there's not as much texture. There's still a little bit texture. And if you look, a problem that I know I'm having right now, and I actually will ask my subjects this, it's pointed here. So she's actually getting a little bit of a hot spot on her head. So I sometimes say to my subjects, is that center thing lined up with your head? <laughs> I don't care, that's fine, they'll help me out. Just a little bit lower. Thank you. 
So that's going to be better. That's more lined up. So I shouldn't have quite the hot spot on her forehead. Thank you very much, John. So now let's take one more shot like this. So I raise this up, and one of the things that I like, and one of the reasons I raised it up, is a higher light. I know I'm coming in the way, no camera's gonna be able to see me. Okay, sorry. Um, a higher light, it carves out the cheekbones a little bit, and also the shadow under her lips makes her lips look fuller. If I have the light really, really low, I won't have much texture, which is really good for the skin, but then I have no shape to her face. So if I raise it up a little bit, now she starts to have some nice dimension, shadows under her jaw, fuller lips. So it's that balance. Um, can I have the reflector? So I do want that shape, but I don't think I want as much texture. And one way to reduce texture is also to fill in those shadow areas. You see texture when you see the contrast between a bright highlight and a dark shadow. So if I fill in some of that darkness of the shadow, I see it less. So this would be just a very basic beauty image. And so you're going to notice less texture, a little bit more glow. And if I used, so you see like less texture under her, in her cheek, under her jawline, but she still has some nice dimension, still looks very glowy.